Hey, welcome everyone. It's V the Grill Economist with my producer CJ, who is uh, working in the background right now with the flux capacitors to make sure that this broadcast comes out A-OK. -okay. Uh, we have today a very, very special guest, somebody that I respect very highly in the, in, in the industry and in, within the field. It's none other than the man, the myth, the legend, the enigma, wrapped in the riddle, Bill Holter. Uh, you, guys, you guys can find him on uh, jsmindset.com, uh, his various newsletters, his writings, and other interviews that he does. Bill is one of the most prolific voices right now in the industry, and uh, especially you know, in, in the world of global economics. He's been warning for many, many years about the policies and things that are occurring within our country and how things are playing out. So without further ado, Bill, welcome aboard. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me, Vince. It's, it's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. So uh, what's the latest, Bill? How, uh, you know, what, what's on your radar? What's, you know, what's, what are you watching that's gotten you concerned? Well, obviously, uh, one thing everybody was wondering about was uh, Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock. At 4.01, the world still existed, and it still exists today. Yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> Jim Rickards, uh, I don't know, for six weeks, eight weeks, whatever, was all over the Internet saying the end of the dollar was at 4 o'clock on Friday. Um, I would just say this. First off, I would never try to pick a date like that or especially right. a time during the day. Right. But I personally think he's right. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it is here. It is now. This is all a process, and I don't know what uh, – it's going to be a, a series of events. It'll be a very – in my opinion, the unwind is going to be very, very fast. Uh, and I've said for more than a year now that when this thing unwinds, I think it'll take less than uh, two days, 48 hours, before basically all markets are, are closed. Now, that said uh, – the scariest thing to me that just came out over the weekend is that you've got 40 million Russians preparing to go underground in a drill. Mm. Um, why would they do that? And there's only one answer, and that's because push and shove very well uh, could end up in, in buttons being pushed. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The uh, that yeah, I I heard about the the that exercise of the forty million Russians. Um, they are drilling, and it seems as if the globalists, uh, the neocons, especially that are in this government, are like you said, man. They are pushing. They're pushing hard because it is really is a, a moment of desperation for these. Yeah, guys, and they're huh? desperate. That's what I was going to say. Desperate people do desperate things. The the math to the financial aspect of it, the math shows that there is no way out. Now, the only thing that the globalists can do is create a distraction or create something that they can point at and say, well, our policies would have worked if it wasn't for those damn nuclear bombs or something like that. Right. Right, exactly. Um it's, it, it, you know, you said, you know, desperate people do de desperate things, and it's also desperate people do a lot of stupid things. And I remember there's an old adage during the Cold War. Uh, I think it was, it was spoken of by a general. He says there's three levels of stupid. There's stupid, really stupid, and attacking Russia. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's what we've been doing since prior to, to Ukraine. I mean, we've tried to destabilize the world, and oddly enough, they're trying to keep the world stable. Right. Right. And we, we've seen that where, uh, where the current administration calls for a ceasefire in Syria and then immediately goes ahead and, and undermines, basically provides uh, combat air support for ISIS, you know, undermines the, the actual Syrian uh, gov uh, government and army. Right, within and less than 24 hours. Exactly. I mean, what is the point? And then, that, then they have the gall to have, you know, Susan Powers call the Russian barbarians in the U.S. Security Council. And then on top of that, you had John Kerry saying, oh, the Russians don't care about the, the rule of law. 
Well, and we should look in the mirror and look at our own rule of law. Another big event is uh, the override of the veto of the Saudi uh, the Saudi yeah, bill. Yeah, the JASTA. Yeah, the by JASTA allowing them bill, right? to be sued for 9-11. I know that went through, and uh, already the first person, the first woman in New York already sued the Saudi government. She already has a lawsuit in the federal court against the Saudi monarchy. Right, and there's, there's two real negatives here. One, obviously, is Saudi Arabia is going to pull any and all assets from the United States so that they don't get frozen should they have a judgment against them. So you're going to see, forget about the treasuries. The treasuries are no big deal because the, the Fed will just buy them up and put them on their balance sheet. But the Saudis do own uh, billions worth of stock, billions worth of, of real estate, uh, businesses, you name it. That's the big thing. And then the other side of the coin, which is maybe even more dangerous, is the lawsuit itself. You have what is called discovery. And if you get, yeah. uh, you get decent lawyers digging into discovery, they're not just going to find what happened. They'll prove what happened. And the American public will... It's my, I guess, probably half the people or maybe 60% of the people now understand that the official story to 9-11 is not possible to be the true story. Correct. But you still got 40% of the people uh, that are saying, you know, our government could never be that ev evil. Um, there's, there's no way they were blown up. I saw the planes hit the building myself. Uh, but if you do the logic through it, you, you dig into it, see what the architects and engineers say about it, um, clearly it was a demolition job. Absolutely. I mean, 110,000, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, 600,000 ton steel and concrete structure doesn't collapse into its own footprint using the path of most resistance in less than 10 seconds. It right. Well, happen. I forget about, forget about everything else, Vince. Just explain to me how Building 7 came down. And a lot of well, people don't understand that Building 7 uh, housed all of the Enron papers. Uh, it was the, where mm -hmm. the Pentagon got hit was the accounting department. And the day before, uh, Rumsfeld came out and said that the Pentagon had lost $2.3 trillion and couldn't account for it. And those records were gone. Uh, for the two weeks following 9-11, there were hundreds of billions in U.S. Treasuries that were tendered with no paper trail. Uh, the whole thing was dirty from, from top to bottom. And in, in a discovery phase, in an honest, open discovery phase, all of that will come out. And yeah. the American public will just be wild. The whole, world yeah, will, the whole world will be laughing, and the American public will be wild. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, because then people realize that a waste paper basket fire in Building 7 is not what brought the building down. <laughs> is that what they're saying? I mean, they might as well. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. But, the, but I, I think they didn't even address it at all. They just said, No, they no. did it. No. I mean, all, all we have is uh, Larry Silverstein, and, and his lawyer is actually a client of mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because of that tremendous loss of life that day, the, the decision was made to, to pull it, and uh, we pulled the building. And we well, Vince, the next the thing <laughs> is uh, the financial war, where uh, Apple was fined, or not fined, yeah. I'm sorry, Apple was, was given a tax bill of $14 billion two or three weeks back, and yeah. then uh, Deutsche, Deutsche Bank is fined $14 billion. <laughs> they don't it's have $14 different. billion. Dollars. Their whole market capitalization is only fourteen billion dollars, right? <laughs> and they're holding seventy-five trillion in, in derivatives. So how solid is that side of the seventy-five trillion dollar trade? Oh my God, it, it's air. It's, it's empty. <laughs> it's empty. And uh, John Cryan is out there, uh, and he, he's out there trying to comfort the investors. Meanwhile, there is a there is a serious capital flight going on in Deutsche Bank right now. 
I mean, today's a, a bank holiday in Germany because it's German unification. Well, they had day. outages this weekend. All, all weekend, nobody could access their funds in Deutsche Bank. <laughs> and there was, it was an IT problem. How convenient. <laughs> oh, well, I wrote about this last week. And yes, you did. Basically, it's chum in the water. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and, and the, and the it's just of the a, a matter of time until they get, get chewed up. Without a doubt. And, and, you know, the question is, is when is that chewing process going to occur? Is it going to be, is it going to be tomorrow? You know, it, 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 it's so critical at this juncture. Well, it could be tomorrow. It could be tomorrow. Yeah. It could be this weekend. There's no telling when it's going to happen. The only thing we do know is it's going to happen because the problem, the problem is too big and the grand problem is even bigger than that. I mean, should the ECB uh, bail out Deutsche Bank, then you're going to have the Italian banks, you'll have the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Austrian banks, you have all these other banks asking for bailouts. Yep, absolutely. You know, and right now Deutsche stock is, uh, is, is rebounding. And the funny thing is, it's all done on rumor. The latest rumor right now, and this is the only reason why the stock is, has, is showing any sort of life, is uh, there's, a, there's talk about a, a, a snap merger between Deutsche Bank and the telecom company Global Crossing. That is so out of left field and crazy, but, believe, but for, some ra for somehow this is the latest intel that I got this, you know, just, just a few minutes ago uh, from the street saying that this is what, what, what the underlying rumor is for the, for the, for the Deutsche Bank stock being up. This is how desperate they're getting, Bill. Interesting. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, go back and look at Enron. Go back and look at WorldCom. Go back and look at uh, AIG. Go back and look at Lehman. They all had bounces, and they were all based on bogus rumors. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, 1,000%. Um, it, it's all perception management at this point. We, we don't have an effective economy. There's no market. It's all perception management. And, 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 the, and perception management works so long as you control the narrative. And it seems that the powers that be cannot control the narrative any longer. They're losing control of that. So exactly, they are losing control of that. And the bottom line is, and, and even Fed governors would admit that the system is entirely based on confidence. Yeah. Yes, it is. 1,000%. But, but just... Uh, the Brexit vote and just the fact that Trump even made it uh, as a nominee tells you more and more people are waking up. And if you look at the crowds, I mean, it, it looks like an absolute landslide. Of, it is going to be. I mean, you know, you're talking about tens of thousands of people going to see Trump versus hundreds of people going to see, see Clinton. And, I mean, right. I've maintained for probably – two or three months now, that my gut was telling me uh, you're, it's a 65-35 at least, maybe 70-30, 75-25 for Trump. Yeah. And if you saw the online polls uh, right after the debate last uh, Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. I saw three of them. I saw Drudge, which that's a conservative, you know, conservatives are going to vote in that. And that was 82-18. But you right. also had time, which was, I think it was fifty six forty four, yeah. And the other one was CNBC, and that yep. one was really skewed. That was like sixty eight thirty two. Yep, sixty eight thirty two, and that and that was probably sampling more Democrats. It's it's amazing what's happening. This 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 is the point. You know, I, I said this on one of my broadcasts, Bill. I said, you know, Trump at this point could stand behind a podium and just make animal sounds with his mouth and win. He could, I even said he could take out his pistol and shoot Hillary Clinton dead on the podium, and he wouldn't lose any votes. Well, you know, I actually saw, speaking of the debate, I actually saw uh, a video of the aftermath after the debate. Oh, yes, yes. See that? They were, ta they were clearly taking stuff away from her podium. His podium yes. nobody went to at all in any way, shape, or form. But there was two guys that went back to her podium three, four, five times and were taking stuff. Uh, look, it even looked like uh, a screen shut down on her. Yep. It was lit up, and then it shut down. 
So there was something going on there. I mean, now is that a uh, debate? We, honestly, uh, no, exactly. And, and the thing was, right before the uh, debate started, uh, there was some videos, you know, videos, some videos that I've seen and some and some photos that I've seen where you clearly see that there was something underneath, some sort of an electronic device underneath her podium, uh, right in that little in that little cubby that they have underneath that uh, underneath that uh, that desk area. Yeah, I haven't seen that. That one. was removed. Yep, that was removed. She had a wire on her back that, that, that you can clearly see through her suit jacket. Right, I saw that. And the fact that when the people were coming three or four or five times to, to remove what was on her desk, th there was one person on lookout, you know, you can see it again on the video, signaling the others when the coast is clear. Right. Bill Clinton's in the front. He's doing like, you know, trying to distract everybody. And uh, the guy, as soon as there was a, a photographer coming, the guy that was behind the podium immediately stops and uh, acts like he wasn't doing anything. And then the, when the photographer turns towards the crowd, you can see the gentleman reach back in. He grabs the device. He unhooks this. He grabs some paperwork. Clearly, these people are, are, are as dirty as they come. And even though the mainstream media is not even mentioning it, it's really being picked up by the alternative media right. and, through, and then social media, and it's gone viral. People are hungry for the truth. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Hey, you know, we started, or I started with uh, mentioning Jim Rickards September 30th at yes. 4 o'clock. If nothing else, and I know myself included, I mean, I I'm, can speak for the way I was feeling all of last week uh -huh. uh, leading up to Friday afternoon, long weekend in, in Germany, long week in China. Um, I went back and, and restocked up on some things and topped off on some things and reviewed what I think I need to do or needed to do. So in, in a sense, he did do a service by, by lighting a fire under people and saying, here's your hard date, here's your hard time, you've got to be ready. Right. And if you didn't heed that, you're not going to heed anything. Yeah, exactly right. And I, so, I, I think... Uh, you know, my I, advice I to anybody who's listening to this is, you know, we, here we've got extra days, maybe we got extra weeks, I don't know. But it is going to come down, and whatever you have is all you have, and if you're not ready, you'll never be ready. 1,000%. 1,000%. And I think, uh, you know, these guys can manipulate and, and mitigate only to a certain point. And, and you, could, you could use the best computers, the best algorithms you possibly can, and that will hide the, uh, the, you know, much of the, 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 the turmoil that's underneath the surface. But it can only hold back the storm for so long. We're at a point where there's going to be a day of reckoning coming, and it's coming soon, that the best manipulation, the finest of frauds, and the, and the absolute very mo the most capable of algorithms will not be able to prevent the cascading collapse of the market. I don't think I, – I, that day is coming very soon, Bill. I have no doubt. I agree. And, and should have already it, come. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these guys are milking it and milking it and holding it off and holding it off, but they're making it exacerbatingly worse um, in, in, in the process, man. It's unreal. You know, and let but, me um, leave you with one more thing. Mm -hmm. Even the most prepared person in the world mm -hmm. will discover they forgot something. Always, right. You, I mean, no matter how prepared you think you are, you will have forgotten something. And my mentor told me this two or three years ago. He said, whatever it is that you forgot, don't worry about it. Do the best you can. Because you will forget something, and don't beat yourself up for it. Right. Just do the best you can. Exactly. Exactly. Well, very well said, Bill. Very well said. Um, what are the, uh, in closing, what are the, uh, the, the main things that we as a, as, a, as a listening audience should be paying attention to in the next coming days, next coming weeks? Oh, there's, <laughs> there's too many things. I mean, uh, if you want to watch Deutsche Bank, watch their bonds, watch their CDS. Mm -hmm. um, I would be watching to see 
if we get reports of the Russian people coming out of the bunkers. That would be yeah. good news. Right. I mean, if we don't right. get news that, that, you know, we get news that they, they're going into the bunkers, but it, don't get news they haven't come out, that's not good news. And, you know, there's really not much you can do about that. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, also, Bill, how do, how do people get a hold of you? How do they follow you? How do they subscribe to your newsletter? Oh, uh, just go to uh, JS Mindset. That's J S M I N E S E T dot com. Uh, we have a free side where we post uh, a lot of articles. We put comments up. Uh, we put videos up, and then we have a subscription side. It's re- very reasonable. It's one hundred and I think it's one hundred nineteen. It's going to go to one hundred twenty nine shortly for the year. Uh, most all of my writings are on the subscription side, and then uh, Jim and I. Uh, do a weekly cross interview. This past week, we did an interview with uh, we had Sean from SGT interview mm-hmm. with us. Um, and generally, the the interviews are generally on the subscription side. So, and I, I've said this for well since we started. Um, just getting to listen to Jim once a week is worth yeah. the price of admission. Absolutely, absolutely. Very well said, Bill Holter. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for the for sharing so much of your knowledge and your take on what's going on. And uh, we definitely got to do this again, man. Very sooner rather than later, especially with the way things are going. My pleasure, Vince. I hope we are able to to do another interview in the future. Absolutely, Jim. Th- I mean, uh, Bill. Thank you so much, and uh, you have a great day, brother. Take care. You too. God bless. Hey, welcome everyone. It's V the Grill Economist with my producer CJ, who is uh, working in the background right now with the flux capacitors to make sure that this broadcast comes out A-OK. Uh, we have today a very, very special guest, somebody that I respect very highly in the, in, in the industry and in, within the field. It's none other than the man, the myth, the legend, the enigma, wrapped in the riddle, Bill Holter. Uh, you, guys, you guys can find him on uh, jsmindset.com, uh, his various newsletters, his writings, and other interviews that he does. Bill is one of the most prolific voices right now in the industry, and uh, especially you know in, in the world of global economics. He's been warning for many, many years about the policies and things that are occurring within our country and how things are playing out. So without further ado, Bill, welcome aboard. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me, Vince. It's, it's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. So, uh What's the latest, Bill? How uh, you know what, what's on your radar? What's you know what's what are you watching that's gotten you concerned? Well, obviously, uh, one thing everybody was wondering about was uh, Friday afternoon at four o'clock at four o one. The world still existed, and it still exists today. Yeah. So I mean, Jim Rickards. Uh, I don't know for six weeks, eight weeks, whatever, was all over the internet saying the end of the dollar was at 4 o'clock on Friday. Um, I would just say this. First off, I would never try to pick a date like that, or especially right. a time during the day. Right. But Carrie's saying, oh, the Russians don't care about the, the rule of law. <laughs> well, and we should look in the mirror look at our own rule of law. Another big event is uh, the override of the veto of the Saudi, uh, the Saudi yeah, bill. Yeah, the JAXA. Yeah, the JAXA bill, right? To be sued for 9-11. The, 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 I know that went through, and uh, already the first person, the, the first woman in New York already sued the Saudi government. She already has a lawsuit in the federal court against the Saudi monarchy. Right, and he, there's there's two real negatives here. One, obviously, is... Saudi Arabia is going to pull any and all assets from the United States so that they don't get frozen should they have a judgment against them. So you're going to see, forget about the treasuries. The treasuries are no big deal because the the Fed will just buy them up and put them on their balance sheet. But the Saudis do own uh, billions worth of stock, billions worth of of real estate, uh, businesses, you name it. That's the big thing. And then the other side of the coin, which is maybe even more dangerous, is the lawsuit itself. You have what is called discovery. And if you get yeah. uh, you get decent lawyers, 
digging into discovery, they're not just going to find what happened. They'll prove what happened. And the American public will, it's my, I guess probably half the people or maybe 60% of the people now understand that the official story to 9-11 is not possible to be the true story. Correct. But you still got 40% of the people uh, that are saying, you know, our government could never be that ev evil. Um, there's, there's no way they were blown up. I saw the planes hit the building myself. Uh, but if you do the logic through it, you, you dig into it, see what the architects and engineers say about it, um, clearly it was a demolition job. Absolutely. I mean, 110,000, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, 600,000 ton steel and concrete structure doesn't collapse into its own footprint using the path of most resistance in less than 10 seconds. It right. Well, happen. I forget about, forget about everything else, Vince. Just explain to me how Building 7 came down. And a lot of well, people don't understand that Building 7 uh, housed all of the Enron papers. Uh, it was the, where mm -hmm. the Pentagon got hit was the accounting department. And the day before, uh, Rumsfeld came out and said that the Pentagon had lost $2.3 trillion and couldn't account for it. And those records were gone uh, for the two weeks following 9-11, but I personally think he's right. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it is here. It is now. This is all a process, and I don't know what. Uh, it's going to be a, a series of events. It'll be a very, in my opinion, the unwind is going to be very, very fast. Uh, and I've said for more than a year now that when this thing unwinds, I think it'll take less than uh, two days, 48 hours, before basically all markets are, are closed. Now, that said, uh, the scariest thing to me that just came out over the weekend is that you've got 40 million Russians preparing to go underground in a dream. Um, why would they do that? And there's only one answer, and that's because push and shove very well uh, could end up in, in buttons being pushed. Yeah. Right, exactly. The, uh, that, yeah, I, I heard about the, the, that exercise of the 40 million Russians. Um, they are drilling, and it seems as if the globalists, uh, the neocons especially that are in this government, are, like you said, man, they are pushing. They're pushing hard. Because it is really is a, a moment of desperation for these yeah, guys. Yeah, and they're huh? desperate. That's what I was going to say. Desperate people do desperate things. The, the math to the financial aspect of it, the math shows that there is no way out. Now, the only thing that the globalists can do is create a distraction or create something that they can point at and say, well, our policies would have worked if it wasn't for those damn nuclear bombs or something like that. Right. Right, exactly. Um, it's, it, it, you know, you said, you know, desperate people do de desperate things, and it's also desperate people do a lot of stupid things. And I remember there's an old adage during the Cold War. Uh, I think it was, it was spoken of by a general. He said there's three levels of stupid. There's stupid, really stupid, and attacking Russia. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's what we've been doing since prior to, to Ukraine. I mean, we've tried to destabilize the world, and oddly enough, they're trying to keep the world stable. Right. Right. And we, we've seen that where, uh, where the current administration calls for a ceasefire in Syria, and then immediately goes ahead and, and undermines, basically provides uh, combat air support for ISIS, you know, undermines the, the actual Syrian uh, gov uh, government and army. Right, within and less than 24 hours. Exactly. I mean, what is the point? And then, that, then they have the gall to have, you know, Susan Powers call the Russian barbarians in the U.S. Security Council. And then on top of that, you had John